Hello, I'm Anita Nevius Wallace, and I'm here at the 2016 annual meeting of the American Academy of Ophthalmology. We have Dr. Arun Galani from Jacksonville with us today, who's going to share with us some pearls on corneoplastique. Thank Welcome. you for having me, Anita. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, corneoplastique basically is a, is a thought format that I've devised and uh, been honing it over the years. The ability to take technologies and technique and present it as an art with no boundaries between cornea, cataract, and refractive surgery to deliver customized vision to each and every patient, whether they are simple, routine, to extremely complex. And that's the gist of what we are talking today. In this segment, we are going to talk mostly about the segment of corneoplastic related to corneal scars. A uh, challenging subject. Uh, yes, and it's the biggest thing Anita here is uh, the mindset. Uh, when doctors look at corneal scars, they think about how do I get rid of the scar? It should change to how can I make this patient see perfect despite the scar? And therein starts this concept. Having seen over 42 varieties of corneal scars over the last two decades, I've broken it into very th simple three categories. On corneal scar, which is scars when you take off the epithelium, you bump into them. They're over the Bowman's membrane. They can be peeled off the cornea and majority of the scars peel off. In cornea scars, in cornea scars over time have become part of the cornea and in fact represent the true topography and refraction. So I refract patients through that and proceed with laser PRK to emetropia. And all cornea scars are the scars that are at multiple levels and I call the cornea insensible, meaning you cannot measure the cornea, either by topography or refraction. And there too we can work with laser PRK to bring these patients close to emetropia. The point being to keep the corneoplastic principles of elegant, least interventional, brief, topical, visually promising procedures. These are five filters in my brain whenever I do surgery. It has to pass the filters. Love to hear some specifics. So if you have an on corneal scars, when you see many, many patients, and I call that a clown suit cornea, which is when you look at the topography, you see bizarre astigmatisms and various colors, and there is no need to get disturbed or think about transplants. You can actually remove the epithelium. These scars can be lifted up with a simple jeweler's forceps or even a colibri in toto, completely, and you have a beautiful pristine Bowman's membrane. And you can bring these patients back later for a refractive PRK surgery. In cornea scar, if you see, just start refracting them with a streak retinoscope. Don't follow so much the topography in these cases. You refract them and you'll be surprised. Many of these patients, despite the scar, have great improvements just on refraction. Follow that refraction with PRK, not PDK. PDK takes care of the scar and damages the shape, but shape equals vision. So PRK leads to direct vision. So really what you're saying is that it's not topography guided in any sense of the word. Correct. In these cases, it's refractive guided, which is what I've found over the last two decades to be an amazing endpoint, and it makes so much sense. If a patient can be refracted through a scar, and they are seeing with that refraction, it's a direct correlate to their vision if we correct it refractively. By correcting a topography, you're only correcting the reflection in the mirror. What if the best spectacle corrected visual acuity is down, and they can't be refracted all that successfully? Then most likely it's an on corneal scar, and that's the cases where you'll remove the scar, you'll peel it off, let their cornea heal, refract them through, and proceed with laser. Now there is another category, if we go deeper in this conversation, where you just cannot refract them and they are slightly on corneal, not completely in corneal, but yet deep enough. These patients, and I remove the epithelium, I actually do an ablation, a myopic ablation on these patients, and let them heal. And lo and behold, in many cases, I've found them to be refractively stable and measurable from then on. And the remaining scars is, is or is not an issue? It is an issue in a way, but think about it this way. When a patient's coming from 2400 to 2020, of course, that's not as crystal clear as a virgin LASIK patient. But coming from 2400 to 2020 with a three-minute laser vision surgery, with the backup of transplant, which was their only option otherwise, it's tremendous, I've seen. And I have patients who are pilots who've gone back to their lifestyles, are professional sportsmen. It's very gratifying to see these patients go back with excellent vision with hardly any trace of surgery. So SCAR is not my direct goal. My goal is refractive surgery on the SCAR. And the SCAR, as a side effect, is already being debulked, if you may, because it's part of the ablation. Thank you so much.